Hello and welcome to the session in which we would look at stock valuation using the price earnings multiple or the price earning ratio or the PE ratio. In the prior sessions, we looked at the traditional method to stock valuation. And what is stock valuation? Determining the price, a fair price for the stock based on certain figures. We looked at the zero growth model when we assume the dividend remain the same constant over time d1 equal d2 equal d3 and we use this formula the price equal to the dividend divided by the discount rate we looked at the co constant growth model which assumed dividend grow at a steady rate annually and we use this formula to find the price of the stock will take r uh, will take the future dividend next period dividend divided by r minus g which is called the gordon model as well we also discussed the non constant growth model which accounts for dividend growth that varies over time now how do we compute this well depending on what we are giving we have to utilize the time value of money so notice in all these three models what are we doing we are looking at dividend to determine the stock price so the stock price is a factor of dividend great how about when companies don't pay dividend how do we determine the stock price for companies that don't pay dividend now why would companies not pay dividend for many reasons one is they don't have profit two they have the profit but they want to keep the profit for internal growth they don't want to pay it out to to the stockholders and many other reasons which we will discuss later on where, where we have a separate recording for explaining the dividend policy but the point here is certain companies don't pay dividend well if they don't pay dividend we cannot utilize those traditional method so what do we utilize we will utilize other factors or other other figures or other formulas such as the price to earning ratios and other key multiples in this session we will focus specifically on price to earnings ratio we'll explain it give examples show you some examples from the real world and we would look at price to sales very briefly to tell you if there is no earnings we could use price to sales as well let's go ahead and dive deeper into price to earnings ratio before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Our corporate finance course is best for online students and students who are taking corporate finance courses. We cover financial statements, discounted cash flow, stock valuation, bond valuation, NPV and capital investment decisions, cost of capital, risk and return, as well as other topics. Our course include lectures as well as multiple choice questions. Go ahead and start your free trial today. No obligation. We are here to help. Your success starts here. So what is the price to earnings ratio? Well, it's very simple. It's the price of the stock, market price of the stock, divided by the earnings. So it's the price divided by something called earnings per share, EPS, because we are looking at the price per stock divided by the earnings per share, the earnings per stock. What does it tell us? This tells us how much investors are willing to pay for each $1 in company's earning. And we're going to see what do we mean by that in a moment. Now, market price, let's look at an example. Let's assume the market price is $15 per share and the company is earning $1 per share. What does that mean? If the company is earning $1 and the market price is 15, it means investors are willing to pay for every dollar 15 because 15 divided by one equal to 15. So the PE ratio equal to 15. We are, we are willing to pay $15 for every dollar in earnings. Is this a lot, not a lot? We're gonna determine that shortly. Now, in this formula, the market price is easy to find. If it's for publicly traded companies, the market price will be known. So how do we come up with the market price? Usually it's known. How about earnings per share, the denominator, EPS? How do you find EPS? Well, EPS is a simple way to show how much money a company made for each share of its stocks. So when you make your profit, when the company compute their revenues minus their expenses they're going to come up with net income if we take this net income and this is the simplest way to do to do so let's assume we have a net income of 
a thousand dollar and we have 1,000 shares of stocks what do we say if we have the income of $1,000 and again to compute earnings per share you have to go to my intermediate accounting but we have to simplify it here just to help you understand it but theoretically it's taking the profit of the company the income that belongs to the common shareholders so here we are using simple numbers $1,000 in earnings and net profit that belongs to the common shareholders dividing it by the number of shares number of stocks and what we say we say is each shareholder gets one dollar per share assuming we distribute those earnings it doesn't mean we will but that's the earnings per share from an accounting or mathematical perspective so if a company makes a hundred dollar in profit and it has one thousand shares of stock theoretically if you own five shares well per share your earnings per share is a dollar your earnings per share is a dollar theoretically you have five dollars of the one hundred dollars it doesn't mean you are going to get this but your stock is valued at earnings one dollar per share this means each share earned a dollar of the company's profit it doesn't mean you are going to get the dollar if they distribute all the earnings and dividend then you do get a dollar per share which will you will get five dollars but in the absence of them distributing it the earnings we can say that your EPS earnings per share is a dollar this tells investors how profitable the company on a per share basis and when I say per share this is important why it's important because once you see a per share basis it does not matter if the company made 1 million in profit or 1 billion in profit I, I need to look at what is the earnings per one share it doesn't matter what their total profit is because whatever profit they have once you distributed on a per share basis then I would know how well how do I stack against other companies so let me give you an example since we mentioned those large numbers if we're looking at company a and their profit is a million and company B their profit is 100,000 this is the profit net income if I ask you which company you would like if I want to gift you one share of stock I was like okay you have the option I'm gonna give you one share of stock would you prefer company a stock that's making 1 million in profit or would you prefer company B most of you I would say they would say I mean if you have to answer the question you would say I want company A I hope that you remember you really don't know why because I want to know one more piece of information how many shares of stocks do company A have what does that mean let's assume company A they have company A they have 2 million shares of stocks well if I if I compute EPS for company A earnings is a million number of shares is 2 million each shareholder earns half a dollar if company B they only have 100,000 shares then company B EPS you guessed it $100,000 in profit divided by 100,000 shares their earnings per share is dollar I would prefer that you give me a share of company B because company B shares is earning one dollar versus 50 cent so this is what I meant to say you can compare companies on a per share basis it doesn't matter how large their profit how much am I getting per one share so that's important so how growth influence the PE ratio so we have growth so when the company grow how does it influence a PE ratio well let's take a look at a PE ratio first and kind of to see how growth influence this so let's assume we have a PE ratio of 15 it means the investors will pay $15 for every dollar in earning now we're gonna look at actual companies shortly but I want to give you an idea how to interpret the PE ratio so for example if a PE if the if the company is earning one dollar per share and you're willing to pay fifteen dollar for the stock well it means fifteen divided by one will give us a PE ratio of fifteen PE ratio of fifteen historically 
historically the PE ratio for the S&P 500 ranges from 10 to 30 now this is historical historical means over a long period of time now when do you measure this period of time do you measure it from the 1920 or from the 1950 so you're gonna get different figures but approximately approximately the PE ratio historically ranges from 10 to 30 what does that mean it means if a company has a PE ratio between 10 to 30 we could say it's fairly priced it means whoever is buying this company is paying between 10 to 30 so 15 right here in the middle this is a PE ratio of 15 it means if the PE ratio is 15 it means we can say historically it's fairly priced it means for every dollar the company earns an EPS you are willing to pay $15 for that dollar that means the price is 15 now if the PE ratio is 30 it means you are paying 30 now it's becoming your for every dollar you're paying $30 for every dollar in profit you're paying $30 it, this could be a little bit expensive historically again you're gonna see I'm gonna show you some PE ratio that are very high and we're gonna see why they are high and when the PE ratio is low it could mean the company is shrinking or the companies they don't have future uh, they don't have a potential future growth because the higher the PE the higher is the growth so if you want if you're toward the 30 and above it means you have a higher growth so high growth companies these companies are expected to grow fast in the future because of that the investors are willing to pay more for the stock today for future profit and this would result in a high PE ratio these companies would look expensive but investors expect big gains later now keep that in mind high PE ratio because we're gonna look at a company from the real world that has a high PE ratio today low PE ratio low growth companies these companies are growing slowly or steadily so they don't have a potential potential to growth so in investors don't expect big jumps why because they have nothing that's gonna be sexy or trendy in the future so this would result in a low PE ratio they look cheaper because future earning is growth is modest to give you a simple analogy for this kind of kind of help you to think about it think like buying a fruit tree a young apple tree will produce a lot of apples soon it's still young there's a lot of lot of potential you will pay more for this apple tree apple tree because it because it has a future potential it's gonna produce a lot and soon high PE if you are buying an old tree well old tree is getting old it's not gonna give you a lot of apples it's gonna give you fewer apple you'll pay less for that tree therefore it, you will give it a low PE ratio the price will be lower now we're gonna look now rather than apple trees we're gonna look at PE ratio to value stocks so the stock price any stock price will take the PE ratio of that stock price times its earning to find the stock price suppose you're analyzing a video game with a PE ratio of 20 then the earnings per share is two dollars this is from accounting and this is the multiple multiple is 20 now how do we come up with this multiple okay again it's the price over earnings but how do we come up with that multiple it's based on the perceived risk of the company the more growth and the more risk I mean obviously with growth comes risk the, the higher the growth the higher is the multiple so if you think like AI companies these days artificial intelligence companies will have a high PE ratio because they have a high growth high multiple if we take their multiple multiplied by EPS so the higher the multiple the higher the stock price and obviously the higher the EPS the higher the earnings per share the more the company can earn the more the higher the stock price should be so higher PE ratio is good higher EPS is good so the stock price will be 20 times 2 the stock price should be $40 if the P if the if the company can earn $3 per share the price should be 60 if the investors think the PE PE is $30 keeping earnings per share the same 30 times 2 equal to 60 so you want a higher PE and a higher earnings per share why because you'll give a higher price so investors here for this company are willing to pay 20 times the company's earning the company is is paying two dollars and the stock price is 40 now this stock 
this company whoever buying this is paying more than a PE ratio of 15 because for the PE ratio of 15 they're only willing to pay 15 times the earnings here they are paying 20 times the earnings they're paying 20 times the earnings so the higher the PE the higher is the risky so if the stock trades under 40 it might be undervalued if you think it should be traded at that much it will be a potential buying opportunity but also at the same time you might think this is incorrect for example if you think the multiple should be only 10 then the stock price should be 20 and if you have the stock now you would sell it because you think it's overvalued now if you think the multiple should be 25 because this company has a lot of potential growth you should think the price is 50 you will buy it because you think it's a bargain and this is what happened in the real words people think the multiple some people think we should give more higher multiple some people think we should give lower multiple and from an accounting perspective from an earnings perspective as you get more project as the company grows then the earnings per share will differ but people perception of these things differ and that's why they buy and sell stocks and as they buy and sell stocks the price will go up and the price will go down now I'm Let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com. A firm's PE ratio would be affected mostly by which one? New project, the discounted rate, the perceived risk of the stock, current dividend. Well, let's st start to eliminate some easy answer choices. When you are investing, when you are investing in everything that we learn up to this point, do you look at the current dividend or the future dividend? That's the first thing I want to ask you. And the answer is you would always look at the future dividend. So looking at the current dividend is irrelevant because the current dividend, when it comes to investment, it's a number that's already been factored. So I could easily eliminate D because current dividend is the weakest, if anything. Now, the PE ratio, what is, what is it affected by? Price or over earnings what is it what is it affected by it's affected by practically everything new project would it affect your PE ratio yes it will affect earnings if the new project are profitable it will affect earnings they could affect earnings positively or negatively so you really don't know but it could the discount rate of course the discount rate will affect your PE ratio in what sense it will affect your PE ratio the discount rate is a measure of the risk if the company will have more risk it should have more PE ratio lower risk lower discount rate lower PE ratio yes it will affect the PE ratio the perceived risk of the stock would it affect the PE ratio yes it will affect the PE ratio but in your opinion between all those three which one will affect the most the PE ratio my answer is the perceived risk of the stock because the perceived risk of the stock will influence the discount rate and the new project the new new project again it could be neutral it could be positive it could be negative so we really don't know but the PE ratio is mostly affected by how investors perceive the riskiness of the stock if the stock is risky if the stock is risky they're gonna give it a high PE ratio and as a result it's gonna it's gonna affect the discount rate so remember, the risk affect the discount rate and not the other way around. Therefore, the perceived risk would influence the PE ratio the most. What should you do now? You want to go to farhatlectures.com. Look at additional resources, lectures, multiple choice. Whether you are accounting, finance, CPA, CMA, CFA, invest in yourself. That's the best investment you can make. Good luck and study hard.